Huntsville, Alabama, Major Tim Dot Space. I'm uh, Blake Parker, an engineer at the, Net, the NASA Marshall Space Flight Center at their Payload Operations and Integration Center. We control science on board the International Space Station and assure that it is uh, performed safely and on time. So first of all, what is the International Space Station? This is kind of a picture of it. The uh, big kind of dark sections you see are uh, solar panels. Those help with generating our electrical power. And you got the, these big white panels here. Those are our radiators, which uh, help reject excess heat. We have the Russian segment back here. And then we have the U.S. operational segment, which contains the U.S. and uh, Japanese and European modules. So this whole arrangement here is uh, about the size of a U.S. football field or a soccer field. Uh, the size differences kind of shake out, so it's, it's about the same. Uh, and it has about as much space as a three-bedroom home. Uh, currently, there are five people on board ISS, uh, three Americans and two Russians, and two of them just arrived this past week on board uh, SpaceX's Demo-2 mission, which is uh, really exciting. We're finally launching people again from the United States, but also uh, thanks to our Russian partners for uh, giving us a ride for the last nine years. We uh, really appreciate it. This is the building we work at, the Huntsville Operational Operations sorry, Support Center. It's uh, been around since the beginning of NASA and has uh, supported programs all the way back from the beginning. Uh, we supported Apollo Skylab. We'll shout out to uh, Emily Carney with her Skylab video. Uh, Shuttle Space Lab. And now we have ISS, Artemis, and Commercial Crew. So we have support facilities there for uh, the Space Launch System as well as the commercial uh, crew vehicles, which supported when uh, DM-2 uh, launched this past week. So the actual room we work in is called the POIC, also known as PCA-1. So there is a PCA-2. It's our simulation room that's uh, also used as a backup for uh, Houston Mission Control. And that's what this looks like. So this is uh, our very nice uh, modern control center. Unfortunately, my team's I've been working from uh, home here lately due to the ongoing uh, pandemic that's been kind of keeping everybody at home. And so what you're seeing right now is my actual console. Uh, Tuesday and Wednesday this week, I was supporting real-time space station ops from this desk and talking over the loops over my uh, work laptop on a headset that I normally use in our mission control room. So a quick overview of our consoles. I'm using an aerial view. So we have the TCO, the Timeline Change Officer. They're responsible for uh, making any alterations to the timeline necessary, and also uh, reviewing the timeline and making sure that the rest of the cadre, the cadre is kind of just an overall term for the flight control team. It kind of goes back to uh, Marshall's military heritage. But basically making sure our timelines are good to go and we're able to execute things properly without having activities conflicting. Up next we have Pro 1, 2, and 3. That's our payload rack officer and they deal with uh, power and thermal systems for uh, ISS payload racks. And they can also send commands to those racks to uh, do various functions. We've got the stowage console, which is uh, what I do. We keep track of uh, pretty much all the science equipment on station and occasionally have to look into other disciplines, uh, hardware as well, in case we have an issue, or to occasionally help them out. It's a little bit like being a closet organizer in space, is how we kind of jokingly refer to it, and a little bit of 3D Tetris mixed in. We have a huge uh, database of over 5,000 items to uh, help us with that. All right, moving on to the OC console, or our operations controller. They're responsible for making sure things happen uh, on time and safety. And they're kind of our safety officer within the room. We also have a specialist OC that sits in sometimes called a Spock, like the character from Star Trek. Always uh, give our Spocks uh, a little bit of grief about that, but they're also able to uh, talk to the astronauts directly uh, during activities. And they're more specialized, hence the specialist OC. 
and they have their own payloads that they uh, get to work. We have our payload communicator, or PACOM, and they uh, the ones usually responsible for uh, payload crew communication, so they'll be the ones funneling any talk we have in the room through the astronauts, so if the uh, pro team needs something reboot, rebooted, they'll tell the PACOMs, like, hey, we need a crew to reactivate this item, so they'll go and do a power cycle on something to see if we can see it on the ground, or the stowage team is like, hey, we need this serial number or barcode of this item, I want to make sure uh, we get that from them, so PACOM will call up, it's like, hey, we, uh, we need that information, or if they can't find something, we'll give them information on how to find it. And then, most important console, though they're all very important, but is the pod console, and they're kind of the conductor of this uh, science orchestra. Uh, they answer directly to the flight director, and responsible ultimately for the safety of the hardware, the safety of the crew, and the uh, on-time execution of our payload activities. And they're basically, like I said, they're our boss. So on the back row, we have DMC and uh, Marshall GC consoles. DMC is our data management coordinator. They are responsible for the uh, telemetry that comes down from station from our TDRS network. So we'll have uh, these satellites out in geosynchronous orbit. Basically, they kind of stay in one place from our earthbound reference. And uh, we'll receive voice and uh, uh, number type information from them. And they also work with our uh, voice loops and uh, video as well. well. Specifically in regards to our space to ground, Marshall GC. So like Houston GC, you may have seen with uh, William Foster's video. We have an equivalent in uh, our control room. They help with uh, making sure the right voice loops go to the right people. They can. Uh, enable uh, payload developers on space to ground. So we have people that will actually call into our control room to directly communicate with our uh, astronauts. And sometimes they may even be at home talking on their cell phone, directing the crew to do these things. We had a activity years ago during Hurricane Harvey where we had one of our developers call in from our living room on her cell phone in the middle of our hurricane to uh, talk astronauts through her activity. So it's uh, been a lot of fun working here. We get to do something new every day. Uh, things always change, which can be both good and bad thing, but it uh, certainly keeps things interesting. So what kind of science do we do? You might be wondering. Well, we've uh, grown plants in space, so either to study future agriculture on, say, going on Mars or even further, uh, we've had the crew grown their own food on station, and they've made their own salads, they've eaten them, we even had a space hamburger using some, uh, oh, station provided meat, a tortilla, and space lettuce. Also we uh, launched satellites from ISS, it's kind of a low cost way to uh, send demonstration missions out. Uh, universities, even high schools launch satellites with us, even all the way up to the military customers. Uh, 3D printers, we've done a lot of work with uh, 3D printing in space, and that's also huge because on a deep space mission, you're not going to have as much resupply. Likely, you'll have no resupply. You got to have a way to uh, come up with your own new hardware if something breaks, or if you're really smart, you can come up with something no one thought of. Design it in the CAD program, and print it out, and have your own tools that you can make. And then also, we've had some even more kind of out there science, like uh, Cold Atom Lab. We're trying to create what's called Bose-Einstein condens condensates. They're uh, Honestly, I don't really understand all the science behind this, but it's a, a relativistic gas. It basically only has properties of a wave instead of a particle and a wave because it's so cold. And uh, they're using this to develop new techniques, maybe quantum computing, um, even astrophysics applications, which brings me to our other experiment, the alpha magnetic spectrometer, which is kind of a, a dark matter detector we have mounted on the outside of the station that we recently finished uh, upgrading through a series of extravehicular activities, or EVAs, or as uh, they're more commonly known as spacewalks. So yeah, thanks for uh, tuning in. This has uh, been a lot of fun. Uh, thanks to uh, Amelia Piper for putting these together. This is 
really great opportunity for people to learn both outside of school and uh, in the home. So, uh, yeah, we'll uh, we'll get through this. Let's uh, let's hang together and uh, keep your spirits up. And thanks again for uh, for watching. I really appreciate y'all. Have a good one. Thank you.